As attacks on Ukrainian civilians continue, President Biden sent a strong warning to Russian President Vladimir Putin in an interview last night with CNN. Biden reiterated his belief that Putin will not use nuclear weapons on the battlefield, and he says the Russian leader has significantly miscalculated. Well, joining us now with more is ABC News politics reporter Brittany Shepard, as well as ABC News national security and defense analyst Mick Mulroy. Uh, Brittany, let me begin with you. The, the, while Joe Biden says he doesn't think Putin will actually use nuclear weapons, he warned that these kind of threats could lead to catastrophic mistakes. What does he mean by that? Well, Terry, he also compared Putin's potential escalations to Armageddon, big and scary, but also very, very, very vague. So the question remains, what would be the escalation from the White House and President Biden to answer any kind of um, further actions taken by Putin and the rest of the Kremlin? He's been pretty clear since the beginning of the war that he will not put any American troops on the ground. He's been quoted to say something like, when an American and a Russian are shooting at each other, that's another world war. That's not something President Biden wants, it's definitely something the White House wants. You know, for America, for democracy, and of course, even just for voting just a couple of weeks out from the midterm races. I think there's going to be a couple of questions of will there be escalating economic sanctions, what that looks like, how co congressional cooperation might happen in that, you know, just a few weeks before an election. Of course, everything becomes politicized in a way that the president and the White House don't want it to be. And I think large questions remain about what kind of Armageddon uh, the White House anticipates, even though they do believe that Putin is bluffing about using a nuclear weapon. Yeah, hopefully no kind of Armageddon, but, but let's go to Mick on that question. Mick, is it possible that if Russia continues to suffer defeats on the battlefield and it becomes a strategic crisis for them, that Ukraine could become a nuclear battlefield? So, Terry, I certainly hope it's a bluff. Uh, I think it is a low probability that he will go to the use of a nuclear weapon, a tactical nuclear weapon, as we have been calling them, which is essentially a low-yield, smaller uh, nuclear weapon. Uh, but it is a growing possibility because he cannot figure out how to turn uh, the military situation for his troops on the ground in Ukraine around. They simply can't do it. They are, they are losing uh, in every part of the conflict right now. And this last minute call up of uh, forces to, to go fight there is probably not going to change the dynamic very much. So it is a low probability, but it is a catastrophic consequence if he does decide to use this based on the U.S. and NATO's reaction. And, and that's the message that's being sent. It would be a catastrophe for Russia. Brittany, uh, today Biden was asked by our Mary Bruce about the status of Brittany Griner, the professional basketball player now being detained in Russia. Uh, what, did he sh what did he say? President Biden told reporters and Mary Bruce that there has been no movement when it comes to Brittany Kreiner and no direct communication from Putin himself. He was telling CNN yesterday that the only chance he would have to talk to President Putin at the upcoming G20 just next month would be to talk about Brittany Kreiner and getting her released. Uh, but he said not much has happened since then. The White House later coming and clarifying and saying that they are hoping that uh, Russia will negotiate with them and try to get Brittany out. But so far, there's been no major updates. And so they, I think we can expect that line of communication between Biden and Putin to remain broken. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. And Brittany, I want to ask you about Elon Musk, mm. uh, you know, who's out there talking about trying to broker a peace deal, apparently. And basically, he wants uh, Putin to get what, what, what Putin wants. And he told someone uh, that he'd spoken with Vladimir Putin before he tweeted that Ukraine should give up the territory to end the war. Musk denied that report. So the last time I spoke with Putin was 18 months ago. Well, what's going on with Elon Musk? What's he doing? <laughs> That's the whole million dollar question. He's going to be a very, very powerful public citizen. He already is now as the CEO of Tesla, but soon to be owner of Twitter, uh, allegedly tweeting or allegedly speaking to President Putin. He, like you said, he's denied that. But if that's true, it's pretty remarkable that he'd be in touch with the world leader as, as impactful and as aggressive as Vladimir Putin, then essentially tweeting Kremlin talking points saying that Ukraine should be seceding parts of its uh, country to to the Russians, that they should act neutral, that there should be a certain kind of ceasefire. These are things that world diplomats, Ukrainian diplomats, are very angry about. I believe one um, the Ukrainian uh, minister who's living in Germany tweeted at Elon Musk, like, F you. Uh, people are very angry that e Elon Musk is trying to work as a power broker here where he has no authority to do so, but he has a lot of money and he has significant platform and people listen to him. Other very important people listen to him who have the ears of other world leaders and, of course, President Biden. But the 
White House is not touching this, and they're saying they're going to let Elon Musk, Elon Musk as much as he wants online. Well, uh, Mick, uh, he's, he's got a lot of money, but a lot of money doesn't guarantee that you've got good ideas, obviously. But I want to ask you more broadly, it does seem that Musk is one of the leaders of what you might call the appeasement caucus in, in this country. We would have called it that in the 1940s, give Putin what he wants, give him parts of Ukraine, let him cripple the country, kind of like uh, give Hitler Sudetenland. I mean, is that unfair or, or is there really an active effort, Elon Musk at the head of it uh, in some ways, uh, to give Putin a victory, to save Putin's, uh, uh, to save Putin right now? Yes, it is very Neville Chamberlain-like. Uh, but at the time, of course, uh, Hitler was a serious powerhouse. I obviously would not have been on the side. Yeah. Yes. So the idea that they would concede territory to stop a war of which they are now gaining the upper hand is not only uh, unethical, I would say, to, for him to be saying it, but it's also illogical. There's no way uh, they would do that. And not only Ukrainian diplomats should be angry that he feels the need to step in here and essentially carry President Putin's water. Everybody should be. If you're on the side of Ukraine, uh, this, this should not be something uh, that anybody um, gives any credence to. Yeah, freelance. Uh, geostrategy by Elon Musk might not be the best way to, to end the war. But, Mick, I want to talk about what is happening on the battlefield. Uh, these Russian mobilized, newly mobilized troops, how much of a difference are they going to make? Uh, you know, will it be able to turn the tide that, that, that Ukraine has going forward against Russia? Sir, I don't think so. I think this may uh, overall be a backlash against uh, President Putin. We've seen tens, if not hundreds of thousands of, of military fighting age males leaving Russia to avoid this. Uh, these individuals are less trained than the soldiers they have in Ukraine, and we can see how well they're doing now. And quite frankly, hopefully, uh, the Ukrainians come up with a, a significant, what we call a capitulation program, uh, something we did actually in Iraq before the war, trying to get the message out that they can surrender as soon as they get there, essentially stack their arms and put their hands in the air and walk across the lines. If that happens, it's just going to be a lose, lose, lose proposition for President Putin all the way around. He's having trouble for sure. Uh, Mick Mulroy, Brittany Shepard, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.